So menopause strictly uh, refers to the a woman's last period. And typically that happens around the ages between 50 and 55 years. Um, and you only really know it was your last period until you haven't had a period for 12 months and you look back in hindsight and realise that that's the case. But often women will have symptoms um, leading up to the time that they have their last period. And this is what we call the perimenopause period, um, where you're still having uh, some periods, but you may also be having some menopausal symptoms at the same time. So as well as realising that your periods are becoming more spaced out or stopping altogether, women will, what is happening in the background is that your oestrogen level is starting to fall and this fall in the oestrogen can trigger some other symptoms which are ones that people uh, uh, will associate most typically with menopause. So this can be a whole range of symptoms from the ones that are very typical such as uh, hot flushes and uh, night sweats or sweating during the um, when you're sleeping to problems with uh, or issues with mood, so being more irritable, um, you know, low mood, just crying at things that you wouldn't normally be upset about, uh, irritable at things you wouldn't normally be upset about, changes to libido and um, sexual desire, uh, issues with sleep, so either that's trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. Sometimes hot flushes and sweats in the night will wake people up during the night and, and make that worse. Some people experience changes in their weight, so some people can experience um, uh, uh, things like uh, vaginal symptoms like dryness or discomfort, especially during sex. And some people have experienced their urinary symptoms of getting up and having to go to the toilet more often and having effects of this. And all of these things can be either partially or um, fully explained by the fall in the estrogen hormone levels. And, you know, what uh, is interesting about this is that there's a vast range of experience. So some women will go through this transition and not really have uh, any symptoms at all. They will just look back in hindsight and realise that their periods are finished and they're pretty much okay. And then at the other end of the spectrum, some women will have a terrible time where they experience most of these symptoms and it really has a terrible effect on their quality of life and their overall sense of well-being. And so they can feel really, really awful. And I think everybody else falls somewhere in that spectrum, you know, from either, from the not many symptoms at all to terrible disabling experience. And um, everyone experiences this differently. And it is very much uh, associated with what other things are going on in your life. So it can be made worse by other or, or better or worse by your social situation, your other stresses, your work, your environment, your other medical conditions, uh, where you live. Um, all of these things can have a big impact on how much this affects you. And so what you will find is that for some women, they will have these symptoms and um, be able to cope with it just fine and other and another person would have the exact same symptoms and it have it be very uh disabling and and uh, like having a terrible impact on their quality of life and so this is why it's very difficult to generalize about how people go through this time because uh, everyone experiences them different and and these ex symptoms don't happen in a vacuum they happen in the context of your life and everything else that's going on and so how much it affects you depends a lot on that as well as the symptoms themselves so typically uh a lot of women start to experience um, symptoms of menopause before their periods have stopped altogether. So sometimes in the years uh, leading up to the periods, the to periods ending, so typically sort of in their mid to late 40s. And, um, and what we would normally say uh, is that for most women, the worst time for symptoms is uh, the first five years after their periods finish. And for most people, like, and, and what happens is that this, the, the hormones are sort of up and down and your body is going through this period of adjustment to work out, you know, 
to this new normal situation. But the good news is that for the majority of people, once you get through this period and you kind of into your uh, typically sort of mid to late 50s, most people, the symptoms get much better. Uh, and that's even if you don't do any kind of treatment, they do get better on their own. And um, and the vast majority of people find that um, that they're coping much better once you're getting through this period. So really the aim of, uh, you know, for us as clinicians is really to get you through this time and, um, you know, keep it all together, <laughs> most importantly. So while menopause is a very normal, natural process that every uh, woman goes through, um, you know, it's really important to remember that everyone goes through this differently. And while some people will go through this with uh, hardly any symptoms, um, tolerate it really well, virtually no impact on their quality of life. There are other people who at the other end of the spectrum will find that this is extremely disabling time with lots of symptoms having terrible impacts on their either their personal life, their um, psychological well-being or their physical well-being. And I think, you know, there's no set point at which you would say that someone should seek advice or treatment. This is very much driven by you. I think if you feel that your symptoms are impacting your quality of life and um, having a negative impact on your overall well-being, then it is definitely worth speaking to someone about it to see what you might be able to do about it. And that is really the point that I would say as a doctor that you should talk to someone about this when you feel that this that you're not coping and that you would like um, to do something about it. So the good thing about menopause is it actually is a really uh, a good condition to speak to people of our telehealth because, you know, a lot of the management options, whether they are medical management or psychological management or lifestyle management, uh, you know, a lot of this is actually just a discussion between us about what you would like to do and what you think would be a good fit for you. And the, this um, works quite well with telehealth because the good thing about menopause is that most of the, yeah, it's very rare that we need to do um, a lot of tests or a lot of physical examination. And so we can have that discussion by video um, as, as well, just as well as we could as if you were in the clinic in person. And, and particularly for people who are living in areas where they don't necessarily have, um, you know, access to um, women's health uh, clinicians or where it's difficult to, you know, access um, medical services for a long discussion about lifestyle management you know this is something that you know we're really happy to speak to people all over australia um, because it's not something that um, is really uh, needs to be done in person 